What's up you guys? Welcome back. Today I have my friend Katie with me and we're going to be talking about foster care. What's up? Yay. She's terrified. <laughs> I told her not so to be. Scared. We're just having a conversation. It's not a conversation <laughs> in front of a million thousand people. It's just in front of like a few people. It's few not a big deal. <laughs> so Katie is a foster mom with her husband Tim Tom. His name is Tim. Jess doesn't know his name. His she name calls is Tom. Tom. My phone kept auto-correcting it forever, and now I just call him Tim Tom. It's weird she doesn't know her husband's name. Yeah, <laughs> auto-correcting. She doesn't know his name. It's Tom. <laughs> um, but that's not what this video is about. It's not about Tim Tom. It's not about Tim. Yeah. Although, we could talk about Tim, because he's really great. But it's not, about, it's not about Tim. Not this time. Maybe next time. We, uh, we've been friends for a long time. Middle oh, school. Oh, yeah, yeah. Middle school. Since before eyebrows were important. Yep. So like no one had eyebrows. No eyebrows. No, a lot That's of thin. a lot of not things. Blue yeah. eyeshadow. Oh, weirdness. Yes. The good <laughs> stuff. The good, good times. Yeah. Lip uh -huh. smacker. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I kind of want to ask you some questions about me because I'm selfish. Oh, OK. Yeah. <laughs> and this is the Jess show. But you knew me before my addiction got bad. And yeah. then my addiction got bad and whatever. So we were friends in middle school. Did you know that I had a problem in middle school? Or did it like, what happened? Did, did you see a difference in me going from middle school to high school? You know, I was not prepared for this question. She did not tell me she was gonna I don't prepare them because um, it's more organic. <laughs> They're like, uh. uh. No, I don't think that I knew. I knew that like something was, okay, okay. I come from a very conservative family and my parents are amazing and it's just there's a lot of tradition a lot of rules um not a lot of rules my mom is really cool but she's you know what i'm saying they're like cartoon characters they're, they're like so awesome. they're amazing um but it was just like i would say like my relationship with my parents was just so different from what your relationship with your parents was right. like and so like that at 13 was like super hard to really comprehend because like my other friends didn't have like a complicated relationship yeah. with their parents because they weren't going through what you were going through but I didn't know what you were going through either yeah and so it just seemed like you were super like rebellious in a way mm -hmm. like that's kind of what it seemed like as a friend is that she just did what she wanted nobody was gonna tell her what to do which I know that's so hard to believe about so her. surprising <laughs> that's not real um, so yeah I don't think I ever like even thought that you would have an addiction or be struggling with anything deeper than just what Rebellion. I would think normal teen stuff would yeah. be or whatever. But Cause we were friends and then we weren't. <laughs> like we Yeah, were it was very dramatic. It yeah. was just like bing bang done. Cause I knew that like you're you know, you were a Christian, you go to church every Sunday and I just knew that like you wouldn't agree. I mean I think you're very open minded. Not that you wouldn't agree, but in my like thirteen year old mind I'm like she's not gonna understand me. No one understands me. Like I was very like Well that would have been true. I probably wouldn't have understood for sure. <laughs> but you still you was... wouldn't have been like hateful towards me. Oh no. Or like judged me in any way. Like you still would have been my friend. But I was like You know, I it would be interesting to ask my mom mm -hmm. like if she knew. Yeah. Or had an inkling. Because like you spent a lot of time at my house. Yeah. And like we hung out and watched Literally VHS all, tapes. All VHS, all the good stuff. But like you, we hung out all the time. Like mm -hmm. you were seriously like probably my best friend for like a couple of years. Yeah. And so it'd be interesting to ask my mom like if she had an inkling of anything. Because like even, even still like my parents kind of knew again that like Jess was rebellious or whatever, however you want to say it. But they never said like, you can't hang out with her. She mm -hmm. can't come over. They always were like, oh, yeah, Jess is welcome anytime. Like, and I think whatever. that, like, that kind of environment I appreciated so much because they were so open to me, even though I was kind of weird. <laughs> well, even though I was, like, wearing all black. <laughs> and I was just not the typical friend that they would probably want their child to hang out with because when you're 13, you're kind of, as a mom, you're afraid of, you know, your kid going bad. I don't know. I probably sure. made that yeah. up. But I'm sure they like, you know, were a little bit nervous about it, but their door was always open. And that is like, that's the home she comes from. So it's amazing. And I have to ask you that while you're here because my my subscribers want to meet my friends and my family and they kind of want to know about me. So I thought I'd yeah, lead no, with that's that. that's a good question. Yeah, I wasn't expecting it. But Surprise. Yeah, and then like, I, we didn't have a falling out. We didn't right. like have a fight or anything like that. It was literally like, we were really good friends and then it almost just like abruptly stopped like we just didn't call each other and I got involved in sports and things in middle school and 
you showed up to school less and less. <laughs> um, so we really just like it. It's literally like our lives went in like two completely dif yeah. different directions. I don't even think we reconnected until after I was married. I think there was like one brief thing where I'm like, can I have a ride? And you're like, sure. And you give me a ride. <laughs> and then nothing until I was sober and you were married. And yeah, and you had already engaged, had Micah I back. Think. I think you were engaged to Tim Tom. Was I? When did you get Micah back? What year was it? Girl, I don't even know what day it is today. <laughs> um, it was five years ago. Okay, we've been married six this okay. year. So yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but like newly married, and yeah. I think that's like you had said something, like, "Oh, congratulations about getting married" or something like that. And something. I was like, "Hey, Jessie? oh, there's my girl." They all call me Jessie. Like it's so cringe. I can't not like. I try so hard to change it to Jess because I'm like but she's a grown woman. My like, parents can't either. It's so I funny. Can't. They I have called to. me. I interviewed my parents earlier today. I have no idea when the videos are going up. You probably haven't seen it yet, but <laughs> they call me Jessie too, and I'm like. No. No, I literally was talking to my mom and I said, oh, I'm getting together with Jess. And she's like, who? And I said, Jessie. And she goes, oh, I love her. I told her I said it. They're so adorable. Good. Okay, so we, we're here to talk about foster care and we have such different perspectives on foster care mm -hmm. because you're a foster mm -hmm. mom and my daughter went to foster care. So we have two different like perspectives on it. So let's start with why you became a foster mom. Oh my gosh. Um, so I think that Tim and I, my husband, Tom, um, Tim, uh, with an eye. Uh, we we both just like always felt a calling to do foster care even before we got together and so that's just something that was it just was never a question like we've always wanted children and um, it was just never a question or a decision that we had to talk about or make it was just that was always what we were gonna do we were eventually gonna do foster care we ended up doing it sooner than we first thought or anticipated um, which I'm so thankful for, otherwise we wouldn't have had the little ones that we've already had. Um, but it's been amazing, and I mean, we really, I think a lot of people have um, a misconception about why we do it or don't understand it, and that's totally fine. Um, of course it's about the kids, like we want to provide safe and loving homes for any child in need. Um, and kind of, as you kind of said, like you felt like my parents kind of had like an open door mm -hmm. policy. Like we kind of want our home to be that and like any child in our home will just know like we help whoever we can whenever we can. Um, so that's kind of like what we want to have our home be. But also it's really about birth parents for us too. Like yeah. the goal of foster care is not adoption. It is return to home, um, which is hard on my heart because it's I get attached and it's hard to say goodbye to little ones but it's so amazing to see and kind of be a part of uh, people's stories that um, maybe are struggling with addiction or are maybe just struggling with um, good parenting or um, you know how I don't know how to word it but I guess like how to actually take care of their child and not neglect them and so it's really amazing to be a part of that and like watch somebody completely change their life around in any way that they need to um, so that their child is first and that they are doing what's best for their child so it's not just about the kids it's really about loving on birth parents because you're essentially co-parenting with them mm -hmm. like it's not just like you're essentially a blended family um, between the birth parents and the foster home so that's a long-winded way of to say why we why? got into it but that's why <laughs> is the process to become a foster parent long I think it depends on the state in New York State um, it's kind of long but I'm grateful for it so mm -hmm. we had to take 10 weeks of classes and then we had another six weeks of classes just based on sexual abuse which was rough um, but very good and I still felt unprepared going into foster mm -hmm. care and going into parenting because so the class is very different than real-world application here oh, as a baby <laughs> yeah and it's like they will try to prepare you as much as they can but at the same time like every case is so different every yeah. child is so different every birth parent is so different and their story is so different so it's like they can't cover it all even in the 16 weeks of classes so um, there's that there's a home study which basically they just come in inspect your home make sure everything's up to code, you have enough uh, smoke alarms, carbon monoxide detectors, all of that kind of thing, um, exits, that, all that, and then you have to get fingerprinted, um, have a background check, everything like that. So 
it takes some time. Um, so it's like at, at the fastest you could go in New York State would be like four months. So after you and Tim Tom got certified, I'm gonna call him <laughs> Tim Tom the whole time. Um, how long after the four months did you have your first little? We got a call before our home was actually open. So we were kind of taking our time um, in getting our home inspected and certified and all of that because we had, who doesn't have house projects, right? Uh, we had house projects that we wanted to finish up before we brought in our first child because um, we don't have any birth kids at this point. Um, and we got a call from our worker and she was like, can we speed this up? I have a child for you. Like, can you take him? And I'm like, oh, okay, all right, yeah. Um, and we had a little flexibility on time because he was coming from another foster home um, and getting moved to our home. So I would say like we got our home done and certified and opened to take our first placement. Um, and we were officially opened three days before he came to our house. Three so, days. Yeah. That's yeah. fast. But you could have said no, right? We could have said no. Yeah, you can say no. We have had so many calls. Um, I actually have a list of all of our calls that Stop. we've um, gotten, and I haven't counted them recently. Um, we'll count them. We're waiting. This just shows the immense need that we have for foster parents, for good foster parents. I mean, if she's getting calls all the time and she got a call with it before her house was even open, you guys, there's such a need. So if you feel like you are capable and you can open your home and your heart to being a foster parent, I would recommend it. I wish that I could, but unfortunately, because I'm a felon, it's not gonna happen. Even though I've never harmed a child, it's just because of my background. They won't let me be a foster parent because I would love to do it. So we have had 10 placement calls. Um, and then we've had one, two, seven respite care calls. Okay, so, we've so had what 10, is respite? Um, so respite care is uh, like if me as a foster mom, if we have something that we need to go out of town for, um, say it's a wedding, say it's a funeral, say it's just vacation that maybe it's just we're trying to get away just a couple or it's something that we just don't want to take like a little one with mm -hmm. us to, um, we would call our worker and just tell them that we need respite care. It's basically like babysitting for foster care. So like another foster family that's already certified would then say, oh yeah, I can take them for the week that you're gone or for the three days that you're gone or whatever. And so they go and stay at their house for that time um, just until we can come back in, into town and get them or whatever. So um, yeah, I think that's like the best way to say it is just that it's like- Yeah, babysitting. You know, babysitting, like another foster kid for so could. Family. Could a family sign up to do foster care and choose to only do respite care? Yes, you still have to go through all of the certifications mm -hmm. and you could also go into it only wanting to do respite care, get your feet wet, or just be um, a blessing to other foster families that do it full time. Um, but then you can always change your mind if you want to take placements and not just do respite care, you can change your mind and tell them like, I'm ready to take full on placements right. and do that too. So can you talk a little bit about the flexibility that you have as a foster parent? So you've gotten 10 calls for placement, seven calls for respite. Do you say yes to every call? <laughs> no. If we said yes to every call, we've had, so a couple of our placement calls have been for siblings. Mm -hmm. Like uh, we had two, like uh, we had twins one time. We've had two different calls for three sets of, like a set of three siblings. Um, so if we had said yes to every call, we'd probably have about I think 16 kids right now and we have not even been certified for two full years yet um, so yeah no we it's really hard um, to decide what to say yes to and mm -hmm. what to say no to um, Tim and I definitely err more on the side of caution we would rather regret not saying yes to a call than regret saying yes to a call and being completely overwhelmed yeah. by um, being outnumbered or their issues or whatever it is that they're going through, if they have therapies and just all the different things that potentially comes with a placement. Um, so we've said on, we've only said yes to two out of ten calls. Um, and again, like we definitely err on the side of caution, but. I think it's important it's, to know your limitations it and is, to be honest yeah. with yourself. Like, can I handle this? Or is it going to be a negative experience for both me and right. the child? Right. So 
That is really important. I think a few misconceptions is you're gonna have a house of 16 kids right. and you can't say no or it's just gonna be a constant thing. I think people don't really understand what it is for. So right. they're like, oh, I'm, I'm gonna have a house of 16 kids and be taking care of kids until I die. Like, yeah, no. But how flexible is foster care with allowing you to choose who comes into your home? Can you choose age? Can you choose religion, race? Oh yeah, you can choose all of it. So when you, before you even start, you have to fill out like a, a giant packet of paperwork and it is asks you like what age range you want um, if you have a preference on race or gender um, if you get a child of a different religion than you like are you open to that would you rather not have that um, a child of a different culture how would you keep them connected to their culture or is that not something that you're even interested in so you can be like as specific as you want like I we personally don't have any preference we don't have a preference on gender, we don't have a preference on race, culture, religion, anything like that. The only thing that we have a preference on is age. Mm -hmm. um, we are currently open from newborn to 10 years old and that's just to keep, like we will continue to up that age um, as we get older, but we're still, what I like to think is pretty young. Um, we're not. I'm, no. <laughs> I'm younger than her, so she don't is, yeah. you. I'm I'm younger, <laughs> like a lot, like so much younger. Like so um, much younger. Like two years. Um, so no, it's just like I wanted to keep that parental age difference. Yeah. So I'm like, you know what, I could physically have a baby at 16, so like that's kind of like where we have settled. Like as long as I'm 16 years older than the kid, I feel like that's a good age gap. It's still like I'm close to kind of close to their age, but I'm not really a friend. I'm definitely more of a parent figure. Mm -hmm. So that's just like our preference on that. Um, but you can be as specific as you want. You can be super creepy and say you only want blonde hair and blue eyed kids. And You can be super creepy. Be super creepy about it. No judgment. No judgment. It's creepy. Total judgment. You can do it. You can do it. Yeah, um, I think I would be fine. the same. Like any, any race, culture, background, situation, but age, I think it'd be a little bit yeah. harder to take on a 16 year old. 17 year old, 18 year old, you know, so especially I when understand. you already have, if you already have young kids. Right, yeah. So we have a placement right now that we've had for like a year and a half. He will be too soon. He's beautiful. Um, he's amazing. Oh my gosh, I can't even talk about him because I'll She'll cry over like a baby. It's ridiculous. <laughs> he's amazing um, though. But so for us, like even if we got a call for a 10 year old, even though that's in our age range, I would be a little hesitant to take just a 10 year old because having a two year old and a 10 year old is completely different. And yeah, totally I feel different. like maybe not totally fair for a 10 year old when there might be a foster family out there that's got a nine year old and an eight year old yeah. and like that's more in their age range and that they can actually like have more relationship with and make it a smoother transition for them if they have like a friend or a buddy to play with, you know? That's it's really like important because I have a seven year old and a three year old and like for two years, this baby couldn't do anything, you know? Yeah. I brought Riley home and Micah like day one Micah's like well put her down let her walk around I'm like she just came out the womb Micah you have to give her a little yeah. time to grow yeah so there was like two years of like is this kid what is gonna this kid do, do anything like, she's so it's boring so she doesn't do anything <laughs> yeah so I totally get that and I, I like that you said that because I think a lot of people think don't know that they can be so like and it pick. does not affect you getting calls, clearly, because right. we've had like 17 calls between placement and respite care calls. So it doesn't affect that. I will say we were told from the get-go that we would be favored, I guess you could say, in getting calls because we were young, we're married, and we live like in the city of, I'm not going to say the town, yeah. but like the city instead of like the outskirts. And that's mm -hmm. very important because they try extremely hard for school age kids to not have to change schools. So like if you've got multiple schools, different districts really close together in the same county, because it goes by county, then you kind of run into that a little bit there. I will say, at least in New York, there are some schools in our area that have kind of made it so that busing is not a problem. So if a kid gets moved to the next school district with his foster placement, that school district well, instead of making him move schools on top of moving homes, will bus out to get him on their dime so That's that it doesn't awesome. come on the foster parents, which is amazing. But there's only like two out of the four schools in our area that will do that. Ah. So it's it's something that New York is trying to pass like all together and kind of make it a thing. Um, but it's just right now it's by school district and if they're willing and if they feel like they have the funds to do that and most of them are saying no, they don't. So. I don't know, but that is something that's also really important is to like, you you need 
multiple foster most multiple foster homes in like different parts of each county it can't everybody can't live in one little town right. in the same county because that's just not going to make it easier on the kids can you talk a little bit about the financial help that foster oh, care yeah. gives you guys yeah so they try really really hard um to not make it a financial burden as much as possible mm -hmm. um because it's already an emotional burden yeah. <laughs> um i don't want to say burden because i feel like that's not the right word but it's already like hard emotionally mm -hmm. mentally physically all the things so they work really hard to let it not be a financial burden um so you do get a like monthly stipend um i feel like i'm using quotes a lot and i don't know why because it's like no. this is actually a thing like there's yeah there's no need for the quotes so ignore my hands um it's a nervous twitch i used to do it too i said um every three words just, like why am i making bunny ears every anyway um so i don't know what i was saying now monthly stip monthly or uh stip stipulations <laughs> it's a weird not, word it's not it anyway Stipment. you get a monthly payment <laughs> um for like room and board basically right. so it's like trying to cover like maybe the extra heating that you might have um especially if you've got like little babies and stuff and you want to crank your heat a little bit more than when you're you know freezing yourself to save money <laughs> totally do that um and then also for like the extra food and things like that that you might be purchasing for them um and then you also get for um all kids you get like a quarterly clothing allowance okay. which you have to submit for so like any clothes that we buy him we submit the receipts and then we get paid like I don't think they cover it in full it's like a certain percentage so you have um, to do that you have to submit the receipts for that okay but you also to get your monthly payment you have to submit paperwork every month mm. basically so it's like saying this child is still in my home here's the dates that they were in my home if you took them to the doctors what you took them to the doctors for all that kind of thing so it's just it's really it seems so annoying and trust me i've been like ah, i'm not doing enough for you like come on um but honestly <laughs> it's like to make sure that these kids don't get lost they know where these kids are um it's like a double and triple check that they're being cared for that they're going to their you know yearly doctor's appointments and things like that it's just like another check mark which is honestly a good thing because we don't want these kids getting lost in the system yeah. or getting lost even if you think that they're in a foster home like they still need to be checked on until they're either back home with their parents or adopted out of the system so I kind of want you to talk a little bit about the emotional stress that you and Tim go through because you did have one little yeah. that got returned, which yeah. is a good thing mm -hmm. for him, but how did you guys handle that? Oh, so badly. Um, I already know the answer. <laughs> uh, no, honestly, it, it's kind of strange. I feel like we're in like a strange position because I don't know what normal parenting is like. I don't know what it's like to not have to go to court for a child <laughs> or to have, you know, it's not have a easier. worker come every month yeah. to visit them. Like, I don't know what that's like or not have visits with their parents or things like that. Um, so I feel like we uh, that was kind of a blessing in a way um, to just kind of be thrown into like a weird parenting on steroids or something. <laughs> um, so it was obviously hard because we only had him for three months but still like i spent i was a stay-at-home mom i spent every minute with that little boy that he's he wasn't with his too. birth parents um and he was amazing and he came so far um he was delayed in his speech and he was still delayed when he left but he had come a long way and it was just really like amazing to watch him grow and see just the progress that he made in those sh short three months um so it was really really hard i was so happy for his mom i was so proud of his mm -hmm. mom and like was seriously like rejoicing that she was getting him back full time um but i i mean it it was in december and so it was probably one of our worst christmases because i was just depressed like mm -hmm. i and I didn't have any other kids at that point. And I, I'm glad that I didn't because I wasn't ready for you kind another of grieve child. That. And not that right. you're grieving because it's so bittersweet. So you're happy for them, but you're really sad for you. Yeah, so. and it, it was like it was grieving, but it was like this like bipolarness in me almost yeah. because I'm like, I'm happy. No, I'm not. And like I, it was just really, really hard. Like I would have kept him forever because I loved him as my mm -hmm. own. And um, 
I would have been fully okay with keeping him. Yeah. But at the same time, like, again, like, I was just so proud of his mom and that she really was, for the first time in his life, putting him first and um, just doing what she needed to do and that she got him back. And that was amazing. And it was so amazing to see and be part of that. Um, but it is. It is grieving, the loss of them. And honestly, I had somebody kind of say something along the lines of, you know, we have people say like, oh, I could never do that. I could never mm -hmm. let them go. We've had people say like, why would you want to do that to yourself? Like if you're just gonna grieve and everything. And I didn't really let people in on how badly I was grieving when I was because I felt like that was what the response yeah. I was gonna get was like, well then why are you doing it? It's a choice. Mm -hmm. But like, isn't that what kids deserve? Yeah. Like every kid in my home that I send back home as gr happy as I will be that their parents turn their life around, if I'm doing it right, I should lose it, kind of. You yeah, know what I mean? Like, I totally I, it, it should kind of break me a little mm -hmm. bit. Like, and I just think that, like, if you're doing it the right way, because I know there's foster families out there that are crap, and <laughs> that's just fact. That's just how it is. That's Good life. Good and everything. Right. But if you're doing it right, you kind of, your heart should break. You kind of should yeah. fall apart a little bit every time a kid leaves your home regardless of how happy you are that they are going home so I think it's just one of those things that sucks but also is awesome and you just have to embrace it and I'm still learning because we've only sent him home and our next placement is still that we got is still with us a year and a half later um, and we don't really know what the status of that is going to be and how that's going to play out but I don't know it's just some You're it's part of it, it. it's uh, slightly, slightly. Not I really. know that my subscribers are gonna have a lot of questions in this regard. So we're we're not gonna talk about the situations of the parents because that's really their private business. We can't show pictures of the kids because we wanna keep them safe and confidential. So please don't ask questions like that just to protect their anonymity and their life. We don't wanna put them on blast all over YouTube. That's not what this video is for. Um, and I know that you guys are just curious because I would be too. Like, well, oh, why yeah. is this kid in foster care? I totally oh, yeah. get it. Yeah. But I've been on the other side of it and I would never put a kid on blast and a mom on blast because I wouldn't appreciate that. So right. I just know that we're all, we're human, we're curious, we do want to know, but we're not going to share those things. So is there anything else that you want to say about foster care before I let you go? Throw up because you're so nervous. Ooh, um, I love her. I don't think so. I guess I would say foster care is not for everybody, but I also believe that parenting is not for everybody. I don't think that, do that. <laughs> everybody is meant to be a parent, and even the people that are meant to be parents, I don't think that means that you're necessarily meant to be a stay-at-home mom or stay-at-home dad. Like, I think everybody's journey is different and unique and beautiful in that way. So foster care is just another layer of that, and it's not for everybody, but I think it's for a lot more people than people think it is. Yeah. Because it it's something that's so, so needed. And yes, it's hard, but it's so rewarding and it's so amazing. And I just, I feel like I've changed and grown so much from just the two little ones that have been in my home. And I wouldn't have those experiences if I hadn't jumped into this really scary thing. And it's still scary. Two years later, I'm still, I get calls and I'm like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> Three children, okay, um, I don't know. That's actually not true. The more kids that they call me with, the more I'm like, I'll take them, and Tim's like, mm, no, we're not ready for three kids. We're not ready for four kids, three and under. Yeah, we had totally that call fine. And, uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, it's just not for everybody, but I really think that if more people explored it, or the different options, like being able to just do respite care, yeah, like that's a huge yes. blessing. It's like part-time fostering, if that, because it'd be like a couple of days a month maybe, right, you know? Right. So And even then, no. you get to say no yeah. just as much. Like you could get called for 16 respite cares in a in, you know, seven month period, you can say no to every single one of them. Like. And it really doesn't take a lot to keep your certification up. Like it's not, you have to have training hours, but it's like four hours a year. Um, and I'm it's glad really, you said that because I didn't know that. Yeah, it's like, and it's like, you can go to a class, you can, um, like our, uh, the children's home that we go through, they offer classes to cover that training. Um, there's like, I don't know how lax every county is or every state, but like we were told at one point that you could even like read a book about like developmental um, stages with kids or um, 
trauma or things like that and like write a book report kind of a thing on like what you've learned from I feel it. like every parent should do that. I know, you know, there's so many good books out there. I can't even, that's a whole other topic. It's a whole other so. video that Katie will come back it's for. Not, no. <laughs> um, but no, so there's just, it's, it takes very little to keep your certification up. You have to get your home inspected every year, but it's like, it's nothing. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's a lot easier, I think, than people realize, mm -hmm. and it's a lot, it's a lot more needed than I think people realize. There's over, oh, there's over 400,000 kids in the United States in foster care right now, and I can tell you there are foster families that are having to say yes to calls because there aren't enough in their area, there aren't enough homes in their area, and so you've got families getting overloaded, you've got families getting burned out fast, and um, it's just really needed and if more people did it I think that it would just be better overall we would have a better understanding of these kids and we'd have a better understanding of how to help them in the school system we'd have a better understanding of how to help them when they get close to aging out of the system we would have a better understanding of what we need to do just as a community to help each other and help maybe break the cycle that a lot of these kids are in so that they aren't doing the same exact thing um, and getting involved in drugs and other things if mm -hmm. they had a good and loving home. So if you're able to, if you feel like that's something that you could do even part-time to start, reach out to your local DSS, reach out to your local children's home, like contact Jess. She will get you in touch with the people. She will mm -hmm. find it out for you. <laughs> Just I will. Just that for you. <laughs> no, I totally will. <laughs> I think you could start doing it and then decide this isn't for me and stop. You yes, know, it's absolutely. not forever. Yeah. So there's so much flexibility and I think that's like the biggest common misconception. You oh, know, yeah, either, yeah, yeah. I don't know how you could do that. That would hurt me. And or if I do this, I'm going to have 20 kids and I'm going to be overwhelmed. Right. Like, so those are, you know. Right. You won't have 20 kids if you don't want 20 kids. Yeah. And it will hurt you, but it should hurt you. If you're doing if it you're right. If you're doing it right. So, and it's just another thing. How many other things in your life are you doing that cause you emotional pain or cause you heartache but it was totally worth doing like mm -hmm. I'm, I don't know what it's like having a birth kid but I'm sure they've pissed you off as much as any other kid in my home would or yeah. whatever and it's like just as much heartache and they're gonna I'm sure you broke your parents hearts I know I broke my parents hearts at times like when that happens she's like perfect <laughs> like no. oh stop she's lying um, yeah my kid last night she was like really really cranky really really tired she kicked me and I'm like ooh girl you do not kick me. And then this morning she goes, I love you, mama. And she's rubbing my face. Oh, that's that's oh. how they do it. That's how yes. they stay alive. They like hurt <laughs> you and alive. then they say, I love you. And it's like, oh, oh. And like, yes. oh, that's why God made you so adorable. So that I don't kill you. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> she Maybe was literally that part out. <laughs> she was literally so sweet after she was so mean. And it's like, okay, I, I'll forget about the mean. Cause you're like literally rubbing my face, telling me you love me. That's so sweet. Or they'll say like, you're so beautiful mama. After oh, they're like so, so bad. I yes. know. Kids are amazing We are though. born with manipulation, my friends. You're, you're so beautiful oh. mama. I have juice box now. <laughs> it's like, mmm. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right. right well, we'll do it. thank you so much. <laughs> this is way out of her comfort zone. So I'm so proud of yeah. you for like meeting me in this really classy Sydney dugout. Oh my gosh. It's so... It's so nice, you guys. I can't. I can't even tell you. If this we filmed over there, gray and, and the wiring Stop. and the open, the exposed wood. Oh, it's so fancy. It's that really it, we're fancy on my channel. Yeah. If we fl filmed on the bleachers in this park, it'd be in the sun, and I'm not trying. Yeah, to I already that. feel like I'm like squinting a lot. So apologies if I am. And she if did we'd so been great. in the sun, then I would have been like, hey. <laughs> Leave some blue hearts in the comment section down below if you think Katie did amazing. And she'll scroll through and see all those blue hearts. Oh, no. Bye, you guys. I will see Bye. you next time. <laughs>